Hey all, it's Darren and it's time for Fire and Water Cooking and Travel Podcast. I want to introduce my guest, Mike Lachardi from the International Sous Vide Association. We've had him on before, but we got some new stuff for 2024. All right, I'll be right back with Mike Lachardi. Welcome to the Fire and Water Cooking and Travel Podcast, where we discuss all things food, cooking, and travel related. Join us as we discuss all different types of cooking methods, cooking styles, all different types of food and restaurants, and of course, we'll talk about travel as it relates to foodie travel, like cruises, all different kinds of uh, food tours, and all that we'll have on special guests to talk about cooking methods and cooking styles, and also travel. Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Welcome back to Fire and Water Cooking and Travel Podcast, the first one in almost two years. I was just talking to Mike. Uh, I want to introduce you to Mr. Mike Lashardi. He is one of the main drivers of the International Sous Vide Association. He's been on plenty of my podcasts before, and if you've paid attention, if you listened or watched any of the podcasts before, you would have saw his pretty face. But we got some new things and new updates we're going to talk about. Um, Mike and I are both now doing uh, travel and uh, doing food stuff. So we got a lot to talk about. So, Mike, go ahead and introduce yourself and let them know what you're, who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, well, thanks for having me back. Always great to sit down with you and have a few minutes to chat. Um, as Darren said, my name is Mike Lashardi. I'm co-founder and CEO of the International Sous Vide Association. And I am also the owner of Together Again Travel and Events. So um, sort of like Darren said, really marrying my two passions of food and travel together. And, you know, you put those two things together, some pretty amazing things happen. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think we both started out loving the food. But before me, anyway, I know you were doing event planning. So you had some kind of travel wrapped in there. But now you're a travel agent like I am as well. But before you started just uh, doing what you're doing, you did some event planning, which kind of exposed you to the food and all that. So how did you, is that how you got started loving food yeah. from the event side or? It's really where ISVA came from was sort of that background with, uh, I started in fundraisers doing golf tournaments and stuff, which are still some of my favorite events to go to. Um, and then went into corporate events and started doing corporate travel and bookings and all that. And just sort of realized there was this community of people. Um, and I'd seen it with other groups I was a part of, you know, taking these online communities and doing things in person and being able to, uh, you know, network together and build friendships and all of those beautiful things. And um, thankfully, you know, I had the idea, reached out to Jason, didn't know him, but knew he was my favorite sous vide author and uh he knew his stuff and just he has been the perfect partner to to make all this happen so it's been it's it's been a journey who would have thought you know uh, going through a global pandemic for a food organization that started to get people together in person and then to be able to weather all of that and go virtual and then starting to to redo all of this in-person connection again now i mean it, it has been a ride over the last few years um and, and it's amazing to just kind of see how the community is has forged its way through it you know yeah that's what we're kind of going to talk about so just kind of start you don't have to go too deep into it but you and my uh, you said you and jason had kind of got together and started kicking the idea around so it kind of just started as like a napkin and a diner kind of thing like Basically. a lot of the <laughs> businesses are started so how did that conversation start? It was really just me reaching out to Jason and like, hey, I know you've been doing sous vide for a long time. Like I had just gotten a circulator um, and I was at a transition point in careers and just started thinking, you know, like, OK, what if I could marry all this together and had a real passion for sous vide at that point, just because I love to cook and it was making great meals for my family. So I just reached out to him and like, hey, have you heard of an event for sous vide cooks or, you know, is there an association for people that cook sous vide? And he's like, no, I haven't, but we should talk. And we got on a zoom call just like this to start. And two weeks later we had the LLC and uh, started talking to people. And, you know, I think it was one of those things that sometimes you, you just, 
have an idea and you go, you know, sometimes you approach people and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, good idea. I think as we started talking to some of these really just influential people and to see them, like as we put together our first advisory committee and to see some of these big names, like, no, this is worth me committing my time to help put this together before we had even done a thing. I mean, it was, it was one of the most inspiring experiences of my life. And I think it was really like, we knew we had something, you know, at that point, when you get people who are on food network and people who are, you know, big, big at all the chef shows and all of this stuff that are like, no, I want to, I want to put some time into this. Um, it just, it was a really, uh, a really moving experience. I mean, I cried after the first summit. I, I, I was on stage saying, you know, goodbye and like, hey, we just did this. Like, holy crap. It was just this, it was just this amazing moment of like, you know, seeing things come to fruition and all of the people that had to sacrifice to make that happen. And, you know, I'm nobody in this industry. <laughs> like I'm mm. I'm just some guy that likes to cook. And, you know, um, Jason would say the same thing, even though he's not like he he is not a nobody in this industry. Um, but yeah, it it was just it, it was just a really powerful experience. Um, and and I think a lot of that is what carried us through, you know, the ensuing years as the pandemic hit, you know, nine months later or whatever, um, and have carried us until today, really. So when you started it, it was just more of a, by the seat of our pants, let's see what happens. Let's kind of yeah. try to put some things together and see if there's any excitement or we get interest in it. And then it just yeah. kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. I mean, we, we maxed out the first conference, like it, it, we couldn't have fit anymore. You know, we were like, Hey, we can get 20, 30 people together and talk shop for a couple of days and uh, eat some delicious food and, you know, learn a few things here and there. And then, you know, speakers like Scott Heimendinger and Meathead and the team at Cuisine Solutions and Crea. I mean, uh, Dave Petranzik, Eric Villegas, I could just keep going with all these titans in the industry that showed up. And um, it, yeah, it just, it just blew my mind. Like it took everything, you know, you, you want to shoot for the stars and you always have your goals and your hopes and dreams and all of that stuff. But I'm also a realist and I'm like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, here's where the expectation is going to be. And I want to do a really good job and knock this out of the park. And, you know, if, if it, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, then we'll, we'll go to plan B and see what happens. But yeah, it, it just, it just all came together. It just, it really did, you know? I think we were on a roll because um, I got on pretty early on as well because we were all in yep. the Facebook groups and stuff chatting back and forth. But I think COVID really did take a lot of steam out of it because we were actually rolling pretty good. The first conference went off well. And then it wasn't, what, six or eight months later when COVID hit. And then the second summit just kind of had to go virtual and then getting back up from there just was kind of uh, low and slow, I guess you would call like sous vide, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but we still had, we still had some good, um, you know, even with, we, though we went virtual, we still had some good excitement and some good, uh, programs in there as well. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, our audience has just blown me away. I mean, that even the first virtual conference that we did, that was such a fun weekend. And, to you know when we were first talking about oh god we're gonna have to do this how long is covid gonna last are we gonna you know actually make this happen i i was just like well you know what we gotta try it we gotta see what happens and our audience has been just phenomenal i mean the the amount of fun that we have in a weekend and still being able to learn and talk shop even without you know tasting stuff you know side by side they're still my favorite weekends of the year. Like it, it's just, and it's grown every year. Like we, we had, we had more people at the first virtual than we had at the in-person that we sold out um, because, you know, it opened up the gates. And of course we were inventing the systems and like trying to figure out the technology that was going to work. And then we've gotten better at that. So they've grown every year. Like it, it's, it's just been a really cool experience. And then we got to do the showcases. Those were so fun. Um, and, you know, it's sort of come to the point as we're getting back into things that, you know, hey, the world's back, back where it was. And 
the presenters are so busy. Okay, I can't ask Dave to do five videos a year uh, because he's busy running Breville's, you know, stuff. And uh, so I think at this point, it's an ad. Uh, it's it's a like, okay, how do we adapt and still keep the virtual stuff going? Because I think there is a place for it. I think it reaches a lot of people that can't uh, necessarily take a weekend off or take, you know, time to come to some of these other things that we're going to talk about. Um, and, and that's really been the, the biggest challenge on my side has been like, okay, how do we keep this going without, you know, me standing up and doing 10 demos for a showcase? Cause nobody wants to watch me for three hours, <laughs> um, you know, and, and all of that kind of stuff. So, different problems you know uh but on the whole i i have just been uh just blown away by by our audience in general you know the positivity the support the the willingness to like hey this isn't the same but we're gonna still give everything that we have to it i mean it's been just incredible i pulled up the uh isva website so if you guys are out there and you're just listening it's uh the isva.org for the International Sous Vide uh, Association. And you'll be able to look and see who uh, is a part of that. Mike and uh, uh, myself and, and Jason Logston, as well as a few others. But um, there's also some events on there. And uh, I think you got some other, uh, some other links and all that in there to equipment and all kinds of different things. So there's some good information on the website. But uh, so if you guys um, want to check that out, you can go right ahead and do that, the isva.org. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now so we can get back to talking. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, hold on. This is definitely need to uh, update a few things there, but we're there, there's a lot of good stuff. I mean, we have our recipe library that's continuing to grow as we're doing other things. And, um, <clears throat> We have a lot of plans for the future with, with all that stuff. Well, there's also the Facebook group and all that too. And uh, so um, you guys can check that out, check out what's going on. There are some events that I want to start talking about as too, as well that you got coming up. And I know you've done some in the past. Now I know you just, uh, just did one in the French laundry out there in California. So uh, how did that go? Oh, what a dream that was. I mean, we spent, we spent four days in the Napa Valley with uh, some just amazing people, you know, again, people that we've met, uh, a lot of them were actually people that we've met in the last couple of years um, doing the virtual stuff. And so this gave them the opportunity to come and do stuff in person. And, and I can honestly say uh, I made new friends like at, at the event, which was pretty going back to our initial goals like that's what we wanted that that's ultimately what it was is let's give people a place to connect with each other and so we spent four days there just wine tasting and uh we had a tour of the french laundry which was amazing uh part of the group went there for dinner and i think there were five of them at dinner at the french laundry and they uh went through five bottles of wine because uh, they just kept bringing it they had some uh, some real fun vintages, but, you know, we walked through their 1600 bottle wine cellar, like while we were there. And, um, it, it was just, it was just awesome. Um, ate at the charter Oak in St. Helena too, which I had never been to. And, uh, their food just blew my mind and they were using sous vide too. Check that out. That was awesome. Um, mm -hmm. love seeing it in the wild. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was, you know, it, it was, a sous vide weekend, but not really. Like we, oh, we also did a farm farmers market sous vide cooking class. So that was we went to the Napa Farmers Market, which has so many amazing vendors. I mean, best strawberries I've ever tasted, bar none. Like just at one of the one of the farms. Um, but yeah, we went and shopped. We went back. We had a, a nice outdoor cooking class. We made uh, some uh, fresh risotto with. Um, Cuisine Solution 72 hour short ribs, which are, you know, amazing. Uh, we did a salad with these really fun olive oil sous vide poached uh, eggs and a sous vide creme brulee. And um, so it was a sous vide weekend, but it was, it was more than that. You know, we did some sous vide, we did some food and wine, we did some fellowship and just really had a blast, you know, and, and yeah, we've got some other stuff coming up sort of in that vein that we're, we're working on. This podcast is sponsored by Fire and Water. 
Travel Services. Let us help plan the foodie vacation of a lifetime for you. Whether it's an ocean or river cruise, tours of Europe, all-inclusive resorts in the Caribbean, anything you need, we can help plan it and customize it for you. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, check out fireandwatertravel.com, and also check out our YouTube channel for videos on travel. We're working on. So, um, one of the things that I've always been interested in travel because I used to plan all our trips and, and just seeing and new places and going to different places and experiencing the food. I think the food's always been my main driver. So, yeah. um, you know, so it just makes sense that you did the same thing with, all right, now I want to start planning some trips because you planned a trip to Paris as well. Yes. You got, you had one that, that you kind of yeah, so did. The first year, yeah. you know, we, we had the idea and we're, we were like, Hey, let's see how this works. And, uh, um, we ended up canceling it because it just wasn't the right time. Um, and it was still kind of on the tail end of the pandemic. So I don't think people were tra traveling and stuff, but what was great about it is I still went, I took my wife and my mother-in-law and uh, her friend, and we went and spent two weeks over there. And I'm so glad that we did that first because from being on the ground, uh, I learned a lot <laughs> about Paris. I had never been to Paris before. And so I learned mm -hmm. like, okay, we were planning to stay here. No, we need to be here. These are, this is the, you know, I met a lot of people and, and it just, it's going to be a better trip this time that we do it because of that experience. Uh, but yeah, we're taking people in January and we're going to spend uh, four nights in Lyon. We're actually going to the Bocuse d'Or, which is uh, a life dream of mine. And I think a lot of culinarians to go and watch, you know, the best chefs in the world compete with each other and um, see who's crowned. It happens every other year, right? Um and side note, I'm actually going to the selection in a couple of weeks in New Orleans. So I'm pretty excited about that as a little mm -hmm. precursor to it. Um, but yeah, we're doing that. We're doing, uh, it just so happens that the Bocuse d'Or uh, falls on International Sous Vide Day this year. Look at that. So wow. we're going to the International <laughs> Sous Vide Day celebration at Tetois, which is a Michelin star restaurant. Um, run by the president of the French Master Chefs Association. Um, I ate there last year, and the food was was phenomenal. I mean, it was one of the best meals I've ever had. Um, so we're going to go to dinner there. We're also going to the International Sous Vide Day celebration there. We're going to have cooking classes. We're going to, I think, four Michelin star restaurants um, with some options for two and three star as well. Um and yeah, it's just going to be a foodie adventure between Lyon and Paris. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I think that's the thing with me as well. I mean, it's not, I know sous vide's a, a big thing that we kind of both started on, but I was cooking long before that. Just, I got excited about sous vide because I figured out what it could do. Yeah. And it was still kind of new back, back when we were actually teaching people and showing people and it's not yeah. just you know, a gimmick. It's not like a, yep. you know, a, a Ron Popeil, you know, <laughs> juicer, you know, <laughs> things like that. I mean, because <laughs> the everyone just thinks, or whatever and, and the there's still, there's still a lot of people out there that don't realize what it is and what it can do. They just think it's a gimmick yeah. or a, or a gadget, you know, uh, just another kitchen gadget, but it really isn't. Yeah. It, it's just a whole, the low temperature cooking and the way the water bath actually helps the helps the temperature or the of the heat actually get to the center of the food a lot easier oh. and more stable it's yep. just amazing i mean and once you figure that out you know then you kind of go oh i can use it for this i can use it for that yeah. it's kind of why i started using it in com combination with barbecue because yeah. they both do very similar things but if you use them together you can make some amazing stuff but yeah 100 percent even with the, yeah. the technology advances and having like the Innova precision oven now, like that has changed the landscape of leftovers forever, <laughs> you know, yeah. having yeah. your own combi oven. Uh, and it, there's just so many things. Yeah. That that's a whole nother podcast episode. Yeah. And I, and I still have that. Mine's like three and a half years old. I actually just cleaned it for the, you know, once by Eric clean it like every three months. So yeah. I just did the, I just did the clean out and I did the, uh, you know, had to uh, go ahead and uh, descale it and all that stuff, which yeah. is a pain in the butt, but the thing still works like a champ. I mean, you know, 
Uh, my my trick it. for that, I don't know if I shared this with you before, you get a piece of plastic tubing. Yeah, you did tubing. Yeah. <laughs> because and it, it makes, really, you can overflow that water every time. Yeah. <laughs> makes the descale process so much better. But uh, just, yeah, the different cooking methods to me has always been in different foods. That's why I love traveling. And that's why yeah. the other thing you got coming up, we could talk about that a little bit, is the sous vide cruise you got with Virgin yes. Voyages coming up. So, yeah, that's going to be awesome. You know, I've always felt that food is the best way to experience another culture, right? And that's, that's I think, and you're saying the same thing. This is why I enjoy food when I travel so much, you know, because you're really experiencing culture through the eyes of the people who live there. And I've also realized that when you sit around a table with people eating, like you can't talk about politics, you can't talk about war, you can't talk about all this crap that divides the world. You're just sitting there enjoying a meal, enjoying people's company. And it, it's it's just an amazing thing, no matter where you go and who you're with, it, it just, it brings people together. So, you know, going into the sous vide cruise, the idea again was, well, Let's go have a, a foodie experience. Let's go to, you know, the great thing about a cruise, especially down in the Caribbean, is you can get multiple cultures in one trip. Like we're going to be going to Mexico, to Cozumel. Uh, we're also going to be going to the Beach Club at Bimini, which is their private island. Uh, but they have excursions there in the Bahamas as well. So, um, it, you know, and one thing we learned through this process, talk about, you know, uh sometimes you just got to go in and figure it out, right? You are not allowed to cook sous vide on a cruise ship. Uh, and I learned this from uh, Gerard and AJ. As soon as I said, we're going to do this, they called me and they're like, hey, you know you can't sous vide on a cruise ship, right? And I was like, what? Wait, that doesn't make sense. Well, I don't know the the all the ins and outs, but it's something about the way the health agencies work and international waters, and there's not really an agency overarching the international waters. And so there's not protocol and there's not food safety standards and all of that kind of stuff for sous vide cooking. Um, and then Gerard also brought up a great point that, you know, on a cruise ship, you're having so much turnaround of the, the staff, right? You'll get people that are on there for six months and then they're off for uh, three or six mm -hmm. months and trying to keep everybody trained on this, method that you have to understand how the food safety works and it's different than cooking in an oven in that right so there's a lot of reasons you can't do it thankfully uh we kind of shopped it around and found the people that would be willing to work through it with us and virgin voyages has been incredible they are an adults only cruise line which i think is going to be really fun i also think they have the best food at sea they have 20 plus restaurants on every ship uh, they have Michelin star food. They have the um, test kitchen, which is all molecular gastronomy. And you basically pick an ingredient and they create dishes all around that for you. So really unique experience. Um, and we wanted something where the food would be not just through our programming, but in in the whole thing. Like, you know, I love Carnival and Royal Caribbean and, and uh, Norwegian for all of their things and you know, food, I think, in general on a cruise ship is getting better as we go. But I wanted a foodie cruise line. Like, I wanted something that people are really going to talk about and enjoy the experience. So, yeah, we're leaving from Miami. We've got two sea days. On each of the sea days, we're going to have a cooking demo uh, based on the locations where we're going. So the first day, this is going to be all about Mexican cuisine uh, and sous vide. Uh, Dave Petranzik is our confirmed chef at this point from Breville. Um, and, you know, shout out to him. He's the real reason why it happened because he's a huge cruise fan. Like he and his family do it a lot. And I kind of was like, you know what? I'm going to get you on a cruise ship. Like we're going to make this happen. And that was some of where the, the cruise idea came from. Um, but yeah, he, he's on board and we've had some really fun conversations about the products we're going to be demoing and um, everybody will be tasting. And then the second sea day, we will do Caribbean cuisine, which I think is something we don't do a lot of here in the United States. Uh, and I think actually lends itself to uh, sous vide really, really well. There's a lot of braises and there's a lot of these really deep like flavor development and and things that I think sous vide cooking does so well. And I think people are going to be really uh really intrigued by what we come up with for that. So, um, you know, it'll be throughout the whole experience. Well, I'm going to try to get on there. I'm actually going on a Virgin cruise on the end of July, 
me and my wife were going over, flying over to Athens, Greece, and we're going to hit um, uh, Athens, and then we're going to uh, Croatia. We're going to Split and Dubrovnik, where most uh, those two places where Game of Thrones was filmed. So yep. we get to go to King's Landing and see a lot of the stuff that we saw, you know, in the Game of Thrones, but yep. also uh, Couture and Kufur. So, so yeah, we're really looking forward to that. It's actually the first time we've been in Europe. So, uh, and wow. I'm really looking forward to Virgin because I like the fact that they have all these specialty restaurants, but they don't charge you extra. Yes. So all all their specialty restaurants are included in your uh your cruise fare and yep. the only thing you really have to pay anything extra for is your drinks so uh you know they try to include everything your uh gratuities everything like that and their food yep. is nothing to sneeze at from what i i've had friends that went on there and they said it's everything is freshly made everything is you know top yep. quality ingredients and it's yep. all different they got a korean barbecue restaurant in there they've got the uh like you said the test kitchen and a bunch of different other Italian. Um, yeah i mean supposedly uh everywhere that they you know everywhere that has food is uh even there they don't have a buffet they have what's called the galley and yep. it's like a it's like a food court in a mall for you know you want yep. a hamburger you know you know you go and order the hamburger and they'll bring it over to you you know and they have some grab and go stuff too they have like grab and go sushi so you can go grab yeah. four or five things of sushi and take it back to your room if you want yeah. so well, and even but, with the the drinks, like they include sodas and tea and water and juices, non pressed juices and all of that stuff, which no other cruise line does that. So a lot is included. And if you look at their alcohol pricing, their cocktails are like nine bucks. Man, in Napa, we went at at Charter Oak. One of the cocktails we ordered was twenty eight dollars. You know, it was a good cocktail, but twenty eight dollars. You go on, you know, most of the other bars and cruise lines that are out there, you're going to pay a heck of a lot more than that. So, yeah. I really like how they do things. I, it, it's very clear pricing. There's over a thousand dollars of it, they call it their included luxury in wrapped up in the cru cruise fare. Talking about things like the. Uh, the specialty restaurants included and all of that. Um, if you're really in a bougie mood, they have their shake for champagne where you open the app and shake the phone and they bring you a bottle of champagne right on the deck, wherever yeah. you're at. Um, so it's going to be an awesome experience and it's five nights. The pricing right now for uh, it is really, really good. Um, and it, like, it's almost to the point I'm not even offering an insider room because I, you know, if somebody wants it, sure, no problem. But it's like a hundred dollars more for an ocean view, um, right? And, yeah. and some of the ocean view rates are even more than the veranda rates. So you know, it's yeah. the the pricing is really really good uh, for what you get on their line, and it's going to be just an awesome experience. And then I think we're going to come back into Miami and do a food tour uh, on disembarking day because. Miami and why not yeah. there's so much good stuff down there <laughs> oh yeah there's a ton of good stuff down there well I don't want to go too much more into Virgin because I'm going to have one of their uh, representatives on on the podcast in a, in a couple weeks as well to go into it but yeah they are quite unique and you know they are adult only so that's another good yeah. thing you don't have to worry you're not paying for the water slides and the roller coasters and all the stuff that you're not interested in you're strictly going there to enjoy what most adults like to uh, enjoy hey all so, it's darren i want to make sure you check out fire and water cooking edible creations seasonings and sauces the uh, black garlic we use is the highest quality domestic black garlic you can find from the black garlic and herb compound butter to the blueberry and black garlic to our all-purpose black garlic and our black garlic and coffee seasoning all are amazing made with the highest quality ingredients. You can find them on Amazon, Walmart.com, and on fireandwatercooking.com. Check them out, guys. Yeah, enjoy. So yeah. with all those events you got coming up, do you think the ISVA is going to continue to grow and change and morph into more of those type events? Yeah, it's uh, absolutely. I mean, for sure. I think, you know, it's interesting. We were talking earlier about kind of goals and, you know, the goals that we set when we first started and, oh, have we gotten there? Well, after, yes. I mean, we have, we have by far surpassed our initial goals with, with the association, but a lot of them 
have changed. A lot of them had to change because COVID happened. And, you know, yeah. it's sort of a, it's just a, it's, it's just a constant evolution, you know? And I think the more Jason and I talk about it, like the community is so important. And that's what we've learned from all the events that we we do, you know, and I want to continue providing ways for people to meet up and, and, you know, get together. And whether that's virtually at an online conference, I think that's just a part of our landscape now that there will be a virtual conference, there will be virtual events. And then we also want to get people together in person where it makes sense. So whether it's a big trip like Napa or the cruise or going to France or in October, uh, I just actually had sort of final conversations this morning with Rich Rosendale, um, and we're going to do an event October around the 18th through the 20th in D.C., and it'll be in partnership with Rich uh, Rosendale and his brand and with Cray and Cuisine Solutions and, and all of that kind of stuff. So whether it's that or going to the Chef's Garden, you know, that was an amazing experience we had in Ohio. Like, I'm committed to providing opportunities for people to get together and experience food and culture and fellowship and all of these things that I think our world really needs. You know, I think, I think it's just a really great way to make the world a better place um, and bring people a little bit of joy. So I think we will definitely continue to grow. We'll continue to adapt. We'll continue to offer new things. I haven't announced this yet, but just I'll tease it. I just signed the contract today on a, a wine river cruise through on the Douro River through Portugal. That's going to happen in the spring of 2026. So, you know, we want to meet people where they're at. We want to offer unique experiences for people. And um, like you said, food and travel go so well together. It just there's no reason not to not to bridge those two worlds, you know, for people. Yeah. Well, and even in you don't even have to go out of the country for food and travel i mean you, you nope. can go from florida to louisiana to texas all the different regions all their food is totally different you know even barbecue oh, we got just, lots of local yeah, plans we, we can do a, a, <laughs> a barbecue trip together but i mean you can go to texas barbecue is different uh -huh. than south carolina and north carolina and east carolina and texas and kansas city and tennessee it's all georgia but it's all it's so cool how food you know and I'm one of those people that I don't just say you have to have something this way, you know, yeah. you know, you can only cook this, this way, or you know, you, you know, it has to be this way, yeah. even if it's a traditional recipe, you know, like yeah. with chili, you know, the big chili yeah. argument, no beans, beans. Dude, <laughs> you can do so much. It's a stew, you know, no matter how you look at it and you can do so many different things it. with it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, but I, I mean, um, I'll tell you the two of the best barbecue experiences I've ever had. And, you know, you might not have me on the podcast anymore after saying this, um, but the best ribs I think I ever had were in Buffalo, New York. And yeah, you can't come on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the best burnt ends I had were in Hartford, Connecticut. I mean, just, just saying. And when my wife was interviewing for med school, like we did North Carolina, we did Texas, we did, you know, and yeah. there's great barbecue in all of those places, but it's just funny. Like you, you can find so much in this country of just people kind of taking their brand and sprouting wings and trying new things, bringing it to new locations. And yeah, it was, it was, it was shocking um, yeah. how good it well, was. And I'm the one that I'll, I can eat Texas barbecue, Kansas City barbecue, Memphis yep. barbecue, North, and all of it's good to me. Yep. I mean, even when I grew up in upstate New York, we had, we would, I wouldn't call it barbecue, yep. but they would. It was uh, Cornell chicken, which was you know yep. cooked on the grill, but that's what we had. We didn't have, you know, pulled pork and all that up there. And, yep. you know, it's, you know, whatever your region has, it's great. And then you go yep. somewhere else. It's great too. You know, yep. it's experimenting and trying new things is yep. uh, one of the, one of the biggest pleasures in life to me, you know, cause yeah. that's what I really love to do. So let me, let's go back into sous vide a little bit before we have to wrap it up. Um, over yep. the last few years, you know, it kind of exploded on the scene, you know, and some of the companies came out with circulators and everybody was like, what's this? And, Nowadays, yeah. you got all kind of different devices out there and new companies that make, you know, sous vide circulators up to a thousand dollars to ones yep. that 
don't even use water, you know, not talking about, yeah. I'm talking about the one that just did convection, you know, not even with a yep. convection fan, but you know, all kinds yep. of different things. And some of them don't make sense. Some of them are just yep. trying to throw things together. They don't use science. They don't really understand the concept, yeah. but yeah, do you think it's going to continue to, to grow like that with the, with all this, all these different, people getting their fingers into it that maybe don't really quite understand what, what it is and yeah, what it can I, be or, <laughs> you know, I do. I think one of the things we were kind of talking about preparing for this is some of the, there's like this, um, it can feel like the newness of sous vide has worn off a little bit. Sometimes if you're, if you're in the Facebook groups and um, I think, I think some of it is, we got so used to constantly being in it, like with the with the pandemic and all of this, like everybody was home. Nobody had anything else to do. We were all on Facebook, keyboard warriors, this and that, you know, and some of that, you know, which which probably to the good of the community, some of that has calmed down a bit and it's quieted down, but there's constant innovation. I mean, just, you know, a few years ago when, when Breville put out the Hydro Pro, like, that was revolutionary in the way that it's put together and how easy it is to take care of it and clean and having the app built in and Innova coming out with the Innova precision oven, you know, there's going to be uh, changes and improvement in that. that. Um, I agree. Sometimes you see some of these companies come out and they're like, Oh yeah, well we just put this together. And you're like, did you actually like think about the market and like do any research on this? Because I'm not sure that solves any problem that anybody's having and, and really, you know, like when you, when you create something new, you want to innovate, right. And, and figure out here's a problem people are having. This is how we fix it. This is why sous vide became such a great thing because here's a problem people were having. They weren't able to put out quality food at home or they weren't, uh, you know, meal prep is a huge thing with sous vide and that solves uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine who has four kids and she's pregnant with twins. God bless her bringing in five and six. And I'm like meal prep for that, you know, type of an environment when you have newborns on the way, uh, just life changing. Right. Um, but I, I think there's always going to be room for innovation. And I think what we're seeing a lot now, um, and I was talking with Rich about this a bit this morning is uh, we're seeing a lot of home cooks that are becoming we've always had the adventurous home cooks, right? Like home cooks in general, and I'm not saying this to the degradation of any chef or whatnot, but a chef has a job to do when they step in the kitchen, right? They need to put out quality food. They need to get X amount of covers out. People need to not wait a long time. The restaurant needs to make money. There's all of these factors that they're bound by in their profession. And so that doesn't leave a lot of room for trying new things and innovation and you know meanwhile we've got home cooks i love lisa keys to death because she's like can i bake a cake sous vide hell i'm going to submerge that thing with magnets and it's going to work and it turned out an awesome thing you know now is that something i'm going to do every weekend but you see a lot of home cooks kind of innovating like that and i see a lot of those home cooks and i see a lot of companies putting out commercial things like the combi oven like blast chillers that are becoming more accessible for the home cook um that are you know you can get a blast chiller from vesta now for a thousand bucks and where when was that an option for the home cook you have a freaking freeze dryer <laughs> like when was that an option for somebody to have at home and and so i think there's always going to be innovation and i think a lot of it now is taking some of the the magic from the culinary industry and these these really cool things that chefs have been able to do over the years and the techniques and all of that. And it's making it more accessible for home cooks. And it's, it's sort of, you're seeing home cuisine being elevated at the same time because of that. So I, I think it's going to continue growing. I see a lot of potential in the future um, of this sous vide industry in general. And um, honestly, I wake up every day, just grateful that I get to be a part of it because I get to, I have the coolest job in the world. I mean, I, I really, I, I could not have imagined in 2018 when we had this idea that it was going to turn into what it is. And I, I just count myself as lucky every single day to be able to do what I do. So, uh, you know, we'll see what the future holds and we'll we'll keep adapting as, as things yeah. change, you know? Well, and like I said, I think you're going to see, you know, like I said, you see 
some of the things like okay i started i'm gonna bring up guga just because he's a, he's huge now but yeah. i started i've started following him back when he first started just sous vide everything yeah. and him and his, his friends they started out as a little hobby thing doing some videos and he's kind of grown and expanded over the years and now yeah i don't even recognize what he's doing anymore because now it seems to me he he started out doing experiments with CV just to see, and then he started experimenting on things that don't even make sense. Now he's into a rut where he has to do, he's the shock value. Now I got to, what, what can I do next? Because I've done so much other stuff. I want to yeah. keep the audience listening to me. I want to keep everybody interested and want yeah. them to keep coming back. Goes, what's he going to do next? So he yeah. does some of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen in my life that nobody would ever think of doing just to do them to get that shock value. And I, you know, I, I'm one that I don't really think that that's what you need to be doing with, <laughs> with, with cooking. Cause, cause, cause people will see that and go, Oh, I'm going to try that. And it's like, you don't want to try that because it doesn't make sense. You don't want to dry age, which you're not even dry aging stuff in, you know, motor oil. I mean, it's, I mean, some of the stuff he does is just totally ridiculous. And it's all, like I said, it's shock value. It's what can I do next? And I got four channels now. I got to fill them up with content so I can keep growing and getting more viewers and all that stuff. And, um, I think even some of the product manufacturers have done that as well. Well, we got to get on this CV thing, but we want to do something different. So let's try to put something out there that is a little bit different, but they don't do any research on what, you know, what, <laughs> what yeah. CV actually is or anything or put any thought yeah. into it. For sure. And, and, you know, on Google, like uh, more power to him for everything that he's accomplished. I mean, he's started. Oh, yeah. I, I, and the, the like I said, that he's built and, <laughs> There's some fun things on there. I mean, hey, I wouldn't have thought to blend up Big Mac and butter. And, you know, <laughs> that, it's pretty funny that that one, sorry, not to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen that video, but yes, it won the blind taste test. Um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, there's there's some fun stuff there. I think, uh, you know, it just depends what, what you're looking for. And that's what I like about this industry is there's something for everybody. For the people that want that shock value and they want the, like, you know, hey, let's see what happens if we try this crazy thing. Like we're gonna, what was the trend a little while ago? The the peanut butter sear on the steaks that <laughs> no, took over the mayo. Yeah, they were coating steaks in peanut butter and searing them off and different things like that. But um, you know, it's interesting too because I I agree that uh, there are some manufacturers who've been like, oh, you know, we're gonna. It, it's kind of like the old. Uh, snake oil commercials or you know hey we're gonna put everything everything in one place and it's one machine that yeah. it back seals it warms it cools it this and that you know it's like an infomercial but you know it's also really cool to see that there's more sous vide product retail that than there's ever been before we oh, order man. uh and this is not a plug well it is the plug but I, I don't get paid for this um we've been doing hungry root recently and i think Hungry Root's been great because it's a lot of semi-homemade, like I can get dinner out in 10 minutes, which has been really useful lately. But it's amazing how many different brands uh, are doing sous vide products now, you know, when it used to just be Cuisine Solutions and a couple of others. Just at the National Restaurant Show last week in Chicago and booth after booth of different, you know, go search your Vons app or whatever is local in your area. You're going to find sous vide meats that are there for the taking. Um, which I think is really cool. Like it makes it, uh, even if you can't cook, it's out there. So yeah, I mean, there, there are always going to be the ones that do crazy things and there's always going to be a market for that. You know, they're going to be the people that want that content and that's great. You know, that, that there's a provision for them. Um, but it's, it's really fun to just kind of watch the innovation too at the same time, you know? Like there's innovation for the sake of innovation, but then there's innovation that like is actually works in yeah. people's <laughs> lives better, you know? And right. I think it's really fun to see that happen. Yeah, definitely. All right. So we talked a little bit about travel, talked about the ISVA. What else you got uh, coming up that you want to talk about? The big thing uh, for us, other than the trips, of course, which, you know, we would love to see you all on. Uh, you can find all the information on our website at the ISVA.org. 
Um, and you can also join our newsletter if you go to the isba.net slash newsletter. Um, you can sign up for our email newsletter. And we keep you posted on all that. Uh, but we do have the virtual summit coming up. It's the first weekend of September. Again, we will have two days uh, general content for everybody. And then we will have on Monday a pro day for chefs um, talking about some really interesting things that are are going to happen um, that are are sort of the next era of sous vide. Um, I, I can't give away too much, but uh, even at our October event that we're doing in DC, one of the demos is going to be uh, on something that a lot of people haven't really thought about yet or haven't, uh, especially on the home cook side, haven't delved into. So um, I just there's a lot of interesting things happening. People are constantly trying to innovate and, you know, what's next for sous vide like we've been talking about. And I think we're going to be able to introduce people to some of that in the fall. So um, come out to the virtual summit, come see us in DC uh, with Rich Rosendale and the CREA team. And um, yeah, just we'll keep, we'll keep planning as people keep wanting to come. So, you know, let us know what you're looking for. Like that, I, like I said, I want to provide experiences that people want that enrich their lives, that give them, uh, new life experiences and and help them make new friends and build community and all of those things so you know we're open to to what people are looking for and you know hopefully we'll uh we'll have some real good fun over the next year with uh, some of these things that are happening cool yep so go to the isba.org and it's got like links to the facebook group the instagram and all that on there uh even yep. linkedin so if you're interested in any of the stuff that's that mike's been talking about anything to do with sous vide i highly suggest you go ahead and hook up and check them out and um i want to thank you mike i know you got to get running and i just want to thank you for the time i'm glad to be back it's my first uh podcast back with a guest uh, uh on almost two years and i'm glad to get it started again but I'm glad we were able to talk a little bit about travel and food uh, on the first one as well. But thanks again. I appreciate it. And uh, you have a great time. Yeah, you too. Always a pleasure. Glad I could be your first. <laughs> we'll, uh... <laughs> All right. we'll see you around. I'll... Yeah, don't tell my wife about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks again. All right. See you, Darren. See you in the next one. All right, guys, thanks again for joining us on the Fire and Water Cooking and Travel Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, on both the Fire and Water Cooking and Fire and Water Travel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow us on the next one. We're looking forward to it. We'll be having some other guests on really soon. See you on the next one.